Let's attend to tonight's stories. Uh, Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ennis Addison, is vowing to protect the data of mobile money customers. This follows recent tussle between the Bank of Ghana and the Ministry of Communications over customer data management. Dr. Ennis Addison made the commitment when he uh, joined the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, to launch the second phase of the mobile money interoperability in Accra. Speaking at the launch of the second phase of the mobile money interoperability in Accra, Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, said they've taken the decision because everything must be done to uphold customer confidence in mobile money transactions in the country. The comments by the governor should put to rest current arguments that the central bank would give in to request from the communications ministry to allow Kearney GVD to have access to data of mobile money customers in the country. The Bank of Ghana has a key responsibility to safeguard the integrity of the financial system to underscore the trust that is central to financial deepening and development. It is therefore critical to ensure the confidentiality of transactions, privacy of data collected by operators in this space, including personal and financial data, the security of transactions, and smooth operations of all stakeholders and regulators providing complementary services in this space. Speaking at the same event, Vice President Dr. Mohamed Dubamia was optimistic ensuring government services are paid with more money would help reduce corruption in the public sector. The quick flow of funds enabled by universal interoperability should also translate into quick turnaround for businesses because producers, wholesalers and retailers can receive funds in real time in order to deliver the goods to customers, regardless of which part of the country they find themselves. In fact, the possibilities are really major, and I'm counting on our fintechs to help really drive the full utilization of the platform that has been created. He was also optimistic that the service would help reduce the cost of doing business in the country. Chief Executive of the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement Systems at YES, he said they have instituted the required structures to aid the smooth operation of the service. The idea was to create the, the three platforms that we have in Ghana for them to be fully interoperable. So the first thing we did was to ensure that we have interoperability in the banking sector. So you see that now that's what we call the GIP. So if I have um, a GH link card, I can go to any bank and have access to my funds. If I have a GH link card from Barclays, I don't need to look for a Barclays POS. I can use any POS in the country. Mm -hmm. So in the same vein, we've transitioned it and added the mobile money uh, in, into the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So how prepared are the telcos for this project? Kanashibe is chief executive of the telecoms chamber. It's more the governance around all of these things that we need to deal with. And then also the social engineering that are around it. You find out that most of the challenges people would have with mobile money, you know, would, especially when it comes to the issues of fraud and things that people talk about. It's more the social engineering where people will go and tell people that they've done something or they are giving them something. But with the system, because of the, um, the cyber security and information security around the system, that is really solid. Following the launch of this service, it should be possible from today to send money from your mobile money wallet to any e-switch card. The completion of this second phase implies that mobile money platform, e-switch and bank accounts are all interconnected. Some have argued that this should now fast track the process of moving the country towards a cash light society and even help reduce the cost of doing business in the country. The Ghana Telecommunications Chamber has expressed worry about increasing cases of cable cuts and thefts. The situation is said to be affecting the telecoms industry as an average of 3.4 million cities is lost to operators daily. Speaking to Joy Business at a ceremony to outdoor a partnership between process and plans automation and lab cables, Chief Executive of the Telecoms Chamber, Ken Ashibe, urged the National Engineering Coordinating Team to uh, step up efforts to curb the menace. There's more in the following report. 
On the average, the telecoms industry suffers about 200 fiber cuts in a day, amounting to a loss of about 3.4 million CDs. However, the challenge of dealing with this regular phenomenon has left most telecom operators rather desperate. The situation not only drains resources, but creates a gloomy picture which calls for improved services. According to the telecoms chamber boss, Ken Ashigbe, the coordinating team set up to control the menace must be up and doing. On a constant basis, instead of wanting to expand you know, your network and be able to get to other places, and you know you then have to spend a lot of money on all of this and we're beginning to find out that if you look at the first quarter the private developers are now the worst offenders when it comes to the fiber cut road developers you know have an issue and there's a team that has been put together the national engineering coordinating team that is coming up with a policy guideline in how to manage the road reservation so that you know we don't have roads being cut we don't have utilities being disrupted we need to get that to work because at the end of the day it's an engineer challenge it's a planning challenge how do we do it in such a way that as a country we would only dig once he spoke with joy business at the ceremony in Accra to cement a partnership agreement between process and plants automation company and world leader in manufacturing of cables lap group engineer Kweku Asma is chief executive officer of process and plant automation limited what I expect uh, from this or what I think Ghanaians should expect from this is about um, good quality cables at affordable prices um, uh, the right value that people would generate from or derive from purchasing these cables um, contractors and consultants are urged to go onto the lab website um, to check on the specifications and standards and the wide range of products that are available from LAP. Fiber optic cables aid the connection of platforms for improved service delivery by telecom operators. Bismarck Aousas report for Joy Business. And you're watching Business Live. We've got an update on our top story right after this break. Welcome back and you're still watching Business Live to our big story tonight and the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, has descended on some hotels and restaurants in Accra for non-compliance with the tax stop policy. The tax force was at Kempinski and Gold Coast City Hotels and where they seized cartons of drinks which were without the tax stamp. Charles Aite was with the tax force and has the rest of the story. It was a busy day for the GRA as the Special Tax Force and Tax Stamp Compliance Unit embarked on a distress action to clamp down on some restaurants across the capital not, of course, complying by the tax stamp policy. We're talking of Kempinski Hotel, Mervyn Peak Ambassador Hotel and that of the Accra City Hotel where checks by the enforcement unit did show that none of these hotels did comply by having bottles that have been sold to their customers have the tax stamp are fixed on them. Mm -hmm. We got in touch with the head of the enforcement unit who's been explaining to us as well as the media what the entire district call means in terms of the enforcement so far. One of the areas that people patronize some of these goods are the hotels and the restaurants and that is why this week we have decided that we are taking on, on the hotels and restaurants. Officers are obviously visiting all the uh, hotels and restaurants in in Accra and Tema, and we are extending those bases to outside Accra, you know, Kumasi, all uh, the whole country, making sure that all the goods that are sold in these areas have the stamps affixed to them. Because we want to tell people that it is not only the retail shops or the wholesale shops or the distributors who are to affix the stamps. Or it is not only those places that are required to have the stamps affixed to the product that they sell there. That anybody selling any of the products anywhere should have the stamps affixed to them. And that is why you see us here. So far, the GRA has been accused of embarking on what others describe as a bullish approach in ensuring the tax stamp policy is enforced. But is this really the situation? We put this question to the head of the enforcement unit. We have not been bullish. In fact, we have had instances that we are even insulted. We don't mind. We take it to be part of the work that we are doing. We are serving our nation. We are doing our work. And so we have not been bullish. We have given everybody the opportunity to get the stamps. We said that we don't sell the stamps. 
anybody who applies for the stamps, we send officers there, they take an inventory, and then they recommend that based on the quantities that they find on the ground, we supply you stamps to be put on them. The question remains, what happens to all these collections of expensive wine? The GRA officials will tell us that they are not going to be giving them back to officials. This happens to be part of the sanctions imposed on companies like that of Mervyn Pick that fail to comply with the tax stamp policy. As pressure mounts on the GRA to meet its tax revenue target by the end of this year and even that of 2019, the GRA is very confident that distress calls like this one will be heightened moving forward and corporate sanctioned severely moving forward. For Joy Business, I'm Charles Aita reporting from Accra. Can we go a little bit? Let's move on to something that will actually make you smile. So for five years, they have taken Ghana's fashion industry by storm with their unique brand, Gigi Wear. Today, all the Joy Business Van, the co-founders of Wear Ghana, will be telling their story on how they went from being broke to breaking barriers. <laughs> It's arguably the most popular fashion brand in Ghana at the moment. I'm in my Gigi Wear here at Wear Ghana to meet the ladies behind this brand. Come with me. Irab Najiman and Angwoko Naikwade are co founders of what is arguably Ghana's most popular fashion brand. It started five years ago when the two best friends decided to follow what they were really in love with, making clothing. I was a banker. KK was in the telco um, industry. Mm. At some point she left her job, went to fashion school, and I had also started making clothes for my colleagues and friends um, and had really fallen in love with this thing. And so for me, I had gone to an interview with a bigger bank, got in the job, it was going to be a lot of money and realized that I was still not very happy on the inside. And so I realized that, okay, banking wasn't the thing for me. Um, so on November 15, 2013, we came together and launched. Okay, November, that makes it five, five years. We turned five, five, five last time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They didn't exactly have a plan, but were determined to build a global brand. So when they launched on 15 November 2013, they knew they were in for a ride. After making bespoke outfits for a while and to mark their first anniversary, Iravna and Angwako were looking for something else that would enable them scale. That inspired the new design, Gigi. The original design was from her. It came from where? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we were broke. <laughs> We were very, very broke and we're trying to put together this event and so we had very little money for fabric and we had to put things together and yet still in that space we're thinking it has to be creative, this it has, has to, to be, be a creative yeah. thing. That was just the breakthrough the entrepreneurs needed. The craze for their first retail collection, Gigi, spread like wildfire, if you like. Smart casual, multifunctional, the beautifully designed fabric with a fusion of African print is worn by both men and women. All these produced from home. What's remarkable is that where Ghana has employed only women. The co-founders say they want to use fashion as a tool to level the playing field when it comes to employment for women. Now, let's talk about the five-year journey. In the beginning, things like, why are our work, in. Uh, employees leaving? Yeah. And then you come to realize, because you've been employing wrong, because you've not been employing people who believe in your why. Um, and then you get to points where, well, you're cash trapped. Yeah. Or that the, the revenue targets that you had set, you hadn't hit. All sorts of things. Or that this one customer that we can't please. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Or yeah. this one design that wasn't working, especially when we're doing the business. Too much. It was all over um, the place. So, yeah. And sometimes really frustrated with each other. Our relationship. Just really yeah. frustrated. Like, what? Like, <laughs> Over the five years, the ladies have expanded their reach, supplying thousands of the Gigi outfit to various parts of the country and abroad. Today, there is even World Gigi Day. I think that there's this intangible thing 
where there's really a lot of love for our brand and we don't take it for granted at all. These are the things you can buy. Like you can spend a lot of money marketing. If people don't accept the brand and become ambassadors, and that's what we've gotten. We've, we've gotten customers who have been with us and become brand ambassadors for us and they go out there and speak for us. There was a time when someone had copied the Gigi and worn it on TV and social media was on fire because our customers were upset on our behalf and these are things that you really can buy you can try and orchestrate them the thing that we are trying to do is to learn why it works so that we can replicate it in other markets as well already making a mark globally the ladies aim to rival major international brands and make gigi the world's next big design Currently, we know that yeah. Africans are not too happy wearing their own. We want to change that. Hopefully, we patronize it. Products made in, let's talk for Ghana at least. At least it's been least. a journey trying to crack that thing. So we want to get to the point where when you hear that something was made here, that is quality you think of. Yeah. If you heard that something was made in Germany, they've sold, it's, it's become a brand made in Germany. It's a brand. It's like a wow. That's what we want to do with our clothing to the point where when you hear made in Ghana, it's, it's like, like oh, yeah, I can go and buy that exactly. and it will be good. Yeah. Five years and the co-founders of Wear Ghana only just started. Fantastic ladies. Inspiring yeah. story. I'm and, so excited very for them. Very well. they speak very well. I'm so I'm <laughs> so excited. Great now what's my giggy wear? Why are you asking me? <laughs> anyway, that's it for our program tonight. Thanks for watching. My name is Daryl Kyle. And my name is Sandra S. Do log on to myjoeonline.com forward slash business for more business updates. Have a great evening and thanks so much for watching.